One thing the Apollo missions drove home about our nearest celestial neighbor is that it is a very harsh place with almost no atmosphere, dust that's more like asbestos than what we have here on Earth, and zero liquid water on its surface. A harsh mistress indeed, to quote Heinlein. An utterly dead landscape, and it's been that way for billions of years. But this may not have always been the case, to the point that the moon might once have been an abode for life. In a paper by Dirk Schultz, Macook, and Ian Crawford, link in the description below, they detail that as study of the moon has progressed in recent years, it has become evident that the moon does possess more water than previously thought, not just locked up in ice in shadowed craters at the poles, but also deep down within its interior. Shortly after the moon formed, after proto-Earth's collision with Thea about 4 billion years ago, there was a time where it was completely molten. This is thought to have led to a period of outgassing, which might have allowed the early moon to build up an atmosphere of water vapor. And in fact, at one point, it may have been even more substantial than Mars' current atmosphere. Also possible at this time was that the moon may have been generating a protective magnetosphere. As the moon cooled, this might have allowed for liquid water to be present on the surface of the moon for a time, or in protected environments just beneath the surface. Also happening during this period were lots of impacts, which might have delivered the building blocks of life to the moon. This allows for two possibilities. The first is panspermia from Earth. If life arose here, which may have happened as long ago as 4.1 billion years, and coincided with the moon's period of habitability, then it's possible that a meteorite blasted off the surface of the Earth might have contaminated the moon, and for a time, Earth's microbial life might have inhabited two worlds instead of just one. The other possibility is native moon life. We know from Earth that as soon as life could get going on this planet, it did. This may also have been the case for the moon. This leads to several interesting possibilities. The earliest life on Earth is still here. When the plants began photosynthesizing, it made Earth's atmosphere poisonous to these very primitive early microbes. But they didn't go away. They simply retreated to environments where they could continue to thrive, including underground. If any life present on the moon likewise retreated underground as the surface became uninhabitable, and the moon has significant amounts of water and heat below its surface, that life, in principle, could still be there, or fossilized evidence of it. Europa or Enceladus, the moon is not, but it's still a maybe, if a long shot. And it's also possible that life present on Earth now actually originated on the moon, meaning that the Apollo missions were technically Earth life returning to the home world after a long period of being marooned on Earth. Unfortunately, detecting the presence of past life on the moon would be very difficult. The moon shows no evidence of the action of liquid water. Any such evidence would have been destroyed both by volcanism early in the moon's history and also the process of gardening that occurs on the moon as micrometeoroids constantly impact it and slowly resurface it. To find out for sure, geologic evidence from very early in the moon's history would be needed, but it is possible to find it, such as ancient rocks that might be preserved below a solidified lava flow. Still, it will be difficult. But this possible habitable period for the moon is interesting to think about, as is the idea of the moon with a substantial atmosphere. I wonder what it looked like from here. And in celebration of the landing of Apollo 11, let me show you something really cool. This is a MOVA globe, this particular one being a special edition for Apollo 11's anniversary. It shows the landing sites of all the Apollo missions and the mission patches. I've always been huge into globes, so these caught my eye. You can see their Jupiter edition next to the Apollo commemorative. What's really cool about these globes is that they rotate on their own. This is done by using light. You can see the lamp I have is bright enough to get them moving quite well. This is because the environment within the globe is very low friction, allowing the mechanism to spin the globe using very little energy. Definitely one of the coolest astronomy related products I've seen in a long while, and they have way more than just the moon and Jupiter. Check out their website at www.movaglobes.com, link also in the description below where you'll find multiple selections for Earth, along with the other planets, and even Pluto in the night sky, along with the limited Apollo Special Edition, available in 4.5 and, and 6 inch sizes. And they have many other types of globes and products too, such as globe versions of famous artwork, decorative cubes, and more that will all make perfect gifts for just about anyone. Check out Mova Globes today. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently addressing those that think the moon is made of cheese. It's not. But cheese has indeed been to the moon in the form of thermally stabilized cheddar flavored cheese spread, not unlike spray can cheese one might dine on here on Earth. Classy, and on that note, check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular, in depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.